Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to take a look at a technique that we use where we, where we find the center mass of odd shaped objects, such as this object right here. Let's say someone is asking you to find the center mass of this. What we need to do when we get something like this is to recognize that this is really a plate made up of smaller pieces of different shapes that we can recognize. For example, if we draw a line, a dashed line, from this point straight down, we can see that the original object is really made up of two rectangles and rectangles we can easily find the center mass of. So now if we find the center mass of the left rectangle and the center mass of the right rectangle, will that allow us then to find the center mass of this shape of the object in itself? And the answer is yes. It turns out that the center mass, of course, we need to find the x and the y coordinates. So let's say the x coordinate of the center mass of this entire object is equal to the sum so what we're going to do is we're going to sum up each piece individually. We're going to find the center mass of each piece individually. So I'll write sub i from i equals 1 to n, however many pieces there are, and multiply that times the area of each piece, area sub i. Now, again, we assume that these are thin plates, that the thickness is uniform, that the density is uniform. So instead of using mass, we can use area. We could use mass as well, but in this case, let's use the area. And just like with the formula where we're integrating, we have to divide this by the sum of the areas of each individual piece from i equals 1 to n. That will give us the x-coordinate of the center mass of the entire piece. We can do the same for the y-coordinate. y bar, the y-coordinate center mass, is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of the y-coordinate of each individual piece, so y sub i, times the area of each individual piece divided by the sum of the areas of each individual piece from 1 to n, however many pieces there are. In this case, of course, it's only two. So let me show you how that works. So the x-coordinate can be found by taking the sum of each piece. So we're going to take the x-coordinate of the first piece. The x-coordinate will be this distance right here. This would be the x sub i or the x for the first piece, we'll call it x sub 1, and that would be halfway from 0 to 2, this is the origin right there, so halfway from 0 to 2, that would be 1, times the area of this piece, which is a width of 2 and a height of 3, 2 times 3, which is 6. 1 times 6 would be the first product of the x-coordinate of, of the first piece times the area of the first piece. We add to that the x-coordinate of the of the second rectangle, which would be somewhere right there, the x-coordinate, call that x sub 2, and that would be halfway between 2 and 4, so that would be 3, so the x-coordinate of the center mass of the second piece would be 3, and the area of that piece would be the width, 2 times the height, 5, 2 times 5, which would be 10. We have the x-coordinate of the center mass of the first piece times the area plus the x coordinate of the center of mass of the second piece times its mass and we divide that by the sum of the mass of each piece that would be 6 plus 10 and that will give us the x coordinate of the whole object right there. This is equal to 6 plus 30 divided by 16 which is equal to 36 divided by 16 which is equal to 18 divided by 8 which is equal to 9 divided by 4, which is equal to 2.25 meters. That will be the x-coordinate of that entire plate. We do the same for the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate of the center mass is equal to, in the y-direction, this would be y sub 1, y sub 1, and that would be halfway between 0 and 3, that would be 3 over 2 times the area, the area will be the same, 6, plus, and the y coordinate of the second piece would be halfway between 0 and 5, which is 2.5, that would be 5 divided by 2, times the area, in this case also will be 10. So again, it will be the y coordinate of the center mass of the first piece, times the area of the first piece, plus the y coordinate, this right here, that would be y sub 2, and that would be equal to 5 divided by 2, halfway between 0 and 5, times the area of the second rectangle, and divide the whole thing by 6 plus 10. In this case, that would be 9 plus 25 divided by 16, 
Notice that would be uh, 5 times 5. Yes, that's correct. So this is equal to 34 divided by 16, which is equal to 17 divided by 8, uh, which is equal to, hmm, that would be 8 goes in 17 two times and left for 1 8. That would be 2.125 meters. And that would be the y coordinate of the center mass of this odd shaped object, which means that the x and y coordinates of the center mass can now be defined as, in the x direction, 2.25 meters, and in the y direction, 2.125 meters. And that's how we do that. It's a very interesting technique. Now notice, instead of trying to integrate that and try to come up with equations, we can simply break that down into individual slices and pieces that are easily recognizable and can easily be found. We can easily then find the center mass of these individual pieces and then through this technique, we can find the composite center mass or the equivalent center mass of the entire disk or the entire plate. And that's how it's done.